There are a lot of experts and gurus and coaches out there in the world of Facebook ads. We have the old guard like Molly Pittman and the Ty Lopez coaching tree of folks like Chase Chappelle who insist on using interest groups and complex ad accounts. We have really smart numbers people like Taylor Holiday who always seem to come up with the next magic equation in architecture every few months and have built cult-like followings for years. And we have a new wave of people who are sharing as they learn and have evolved their thinking like Nick Terrio. In this video from Dara Denny, which feels like a culmination of nearly half a decade's work in teaching people how Facebook actually functions. But I wanna challenge three things today that might make you rethink everything. Now these are often seen as hot takes, but hey, there was a time when ads do the targeting was seen as negligently disruptive and being contrarian for contrarian's sake. And now all but the absolute best, basically anybody who argues that is on the outside looking in. So keep your hands inside the vehicle and buckle up. This one's gonna be a bumpy ride and it's gonna be super fun. Thinking in numbers. I was recently a guest on the Oopsie podcast with Jess and Zoe and I was telling them about the time that I almost got fired from an ad agency for basically saving a client a quarter million dollars a day. What I ultimately learned from that is ad agencies at their core are banks and media buyers are investment bankers. Now at an ad agency, the media buyer is an investment banker working on the behalf of the agency owner. Inside of your own business, hopefully there's somebody who's an investment banker worried about your finance department. Your goal as a business owner is to find someone who cares more about your finance department than the bottom line of their employer's bank account. So we have to think slightly differently about the definition of success. What is your single best investment? Nick Sharma calls this the tier one product. Nick Sharma on a recent episode of Limited Supply went into great depth about the value of a tier one product. This is also known as a hero product. Now you can promote a lot of different things with your store and be profitable on potentially all of them. Being profitable is great, but being profitable and investing to buy a nickel when you could get a dime, well, the opportunity cost of that might be the future of your business. The bottom line is that promoting anything other than your primary best offer for your business's bottom line is almost always a liability. In my experience of running eight and nine figure businesses, we don't even focus on pushing secondary offers or tier two products, as Nick put it, until we're easily hitting 30, 50, 60K a day, like million, two million, five million a month in revenue. And often the easiest way of scaling businesses that are doing like 100,000 a month to get them to a million a week is to stop promoting the eight other things that are getting in the way. Simplicity and focus here is absolutely a superpower. And with that being said, let's get to the second hot take and this one el fuego de spicy creative testing is bad i expect to get a lot of heat for this now raise your hand if you've heard this one it's all about creative popular folks like ash from obvi and jess from fireteam and our beloved dara denny will tell you that creative is king or queen and they're not wrong but let me ask you this why are we testing new ads Generally, when I ask this question to MBA program students or disruptor school students or consulting clients of mine or brand owners where I've taken an advisory role, they say the following three things. We test to improve. New ads get better results than old ones. So more new ads more often equals better results, right? The honest answer is no. No, God! Now, a lot of people have gotten wins here because they've started to test in a more meaningful way. And to be fair, in a meritocratical game theory economy where creative is queen, having a creative director take charge of the marketing department is absolutely getting people a win that otherwise they were not seeing before. 
that's ultimately never gonna unlock their full potential. At best, it's gonna get them where they want to go. But remember, your definition of success is one of the greatest things holding you back. No. Now, when we take a look back at what happens, what we see is that the good ads are great at the expense of the old ads. So here's the thing, and this might twist your noodle just a little bit. What's really going to bake your noodle later on is... Would all those ads that fatigue actually have gotten worse if you didn't test a whole bunch of new ones? The answer is no. Ads can run for months or years. Ad fatigue is a myth. The volume of spend that you would have to have to truly see ad fatigue. Let me give you some context. I've spent a million a day. It took over a week for an ad to fatigue. That's a million a day. If you're running that ad for a couple of weeks and your frequency is like a three or a five, if the average person saw that ad once in a week, knowing the average person sees hundreds of ads a day and doesn't recognize more than two or three of them, do you really think ad fatigue is there because of overexposure? No, it's a data problem. Basically comes down to the old parable. If you don't fix what isn't broken, things will break far less often. Facebook's a machine learning algorithm. The more you focus on teaching it, the better it will get. However, the more you invest in cannibalizing your own success, the less often you're gonna be able to leverage artificial intelligence and machine learning to have your ads and your ad account work truly independent of you. Meaning that your best effort to test a whole bunch of ads means that if you actually win, what you're being rewarded with is a micromanagement full-time job where everything gets worse all the time anyway. Let's take a real world example of this. If you spend the majority of your time hiring new employees that are gonna overachieve on the first few days and you put your thumb on the scale and give them maybe the best chance for success and then fire the old employees who can't compete because, well, you've tipped the scales against them, you're ultimately gonna have a job where your path for success is just hiring new employees instead of having a workforce that's so good without you that you can actually go back to working on the business. That isn't a win. Hey guys, real quick, just wanna pop in. If you wanna learn all of my SOPs on running Facebook ad accounts and building businesses, if you want my playbook on how I'm able to repeatedly with over a 90% success rate build and scale eight and nine figure businesses and you want my direct support along the way to make sure that you will succeed, check out the first link down below for the Facebook Ads MBA program. That being said, let's get back to the video. So the last lesson here, and again, hot take city. Slow and steady wins the race or compounding interest is the most powerful force in the universe. We all know the story of the tortoise and the hare, right? The hare bounds and leaps and runs and does a million different things and gets distracted and ultimately loses because the tortoise, who's moving slow and steady and surely with purpose, cuts the gap between where they are and the finish line by a greater amount with every step they take. Say what you will about Cody from Jones Road, but he had probably the greatest quote of 2001 Q4 on Twitter. A successful business is what scales a Facebook ad account, not the other way around. Ad agencies and performance marketers will constantly tell you that the trick to scaling your business is to find the right ads and audiences and Facebook hacks with cost caps and Advantage Plus and lookalikes and interest groups and retargeting, et cetera, to get you a 10X ROAS so you can spike your Facebook spend. They're dead wrong. Ads are about amplifying your business model. Business at its core is about acquiring future cash flow at a profit. Marketing is about putting your brand with the right message in front of the best customer. Running ads is about reaching more and more of that best potential customer. When you're doing a lot of creative testing and audience testing and running all those Facebook hacks like Advantage Plus and Cost Caps and Lookalikes and Interest Groups and Retargeting, what you're really doing is attracting a whole bunch of different types of attention. How many different times do we hear the sentence, we're reaching a new pocket of the audience? That's not a good thing. What are the ramifications of that? Facebook machine learning is dumber, 
landing page tests become far less effective because the types of people that reach your landing page change far more often. Email flow testing is far less effective because the types of people that are buying from you change dramatically day to day. And ultimately scaling your business becomes far more difficult because the predictability of that future cash flow at a profit becomes completely unreliable. But at least the Facebook marketer has a report that makes them feel good about themselves. So what's the lesson here? Keep your account as simple as possible. Promote only the offer that is best fit for your marketing dollars. Make as few changes as you can to the front end of your business. Only test to improve the quality of things that have already been proven to work. Focus on getting more of the same and grow exponentially. Or you can expect to get more of the same and almost assuredly fail. There you have it. And if you found this video to be helpful, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. Ring the bell so you don't miss anything else. And down below, you're gonna see links to the Facebook Ads MBA program, as well as Disruptor School, my consulting calendar, so that you and I can hop on a call together, screen share, you can record, we can do anything that you need inside of your ad account to make you have more success and less stress, so that you can get the confidence and results that you deserve. Now, I know you could be anywhere on the internet right now, and you've chosen to be here, for that, I want to say thank you. Whether you're listening on a podcast, you're watching on YouTube, your time is a resource that you can never give up. And giving it to me is something that I treasure. And with that being said, I really want to say thank you. Please share with some of your friends. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a couple of videos you can hit. Don't forget to smash the button to like and subscribe and do everything that you possibly can. Leave a review, leave a comment, five stars, anything else to help out. Until next time, I'll see you on the internet. Bye.